So that's those two. And the last one from the Western Frontier campaign is not Line in the Sand. It's actually, we're going to Aces High. Same map though. In fact, a lot of the online levels use the same maps as the single player ones, at least Assault does. There's only like one Assault mission that uses a unique map, which I forget what the name is. Oh, Destroy All Tundrans, I think is what it's called. That uh, map isn't in single player as far as I know. So those fighters are normally Western Frontier. I changed them to Tundrin because I had to do a lot of messing around in order to play as Tundra in this level. Because since I'm playing by myself, I'm player one. And player two is normally Tundra, so I had to change my army to Tundra, even though I'm player one, which is what I do all the time in single player, but it's harder here because of the way like the cutscenes are set up and the way the game is set up to transfer which unit you play as at the beginning. So it was actually a lot of work. This was the hardest one to get working, but I was able to do it in the end. So let's go over here. So there's a bunch of units here. And first of all, we have the Tundra Fighter, which doesn't show up in single player, but is an online. In the first game it was only in two missions. So they made better use of it for this game, definitely. And while I'm flying around, let me mention in this level there's also unused units, similarly to Storm the Palace. Nothing super interesting, like the Frontier Battleship. But as you can see, there's a Frontier Light Tank down there. Which, there's normally not Frontier Light Tanks in this level. And also, Tundra has Anti-Air Veterans and Flame Veterans, which... I know Anti-Air Veterans aren't in the level, which, again, it wouldn't even make sense because you have an Anti-Air Vehicle. But I'm pretty sure Flame Vets aren't. Assault, assault Vets are, though, normally. I just threw in another one because I wasn't sure which level I would use to show the Assault Veteran. <clears throat> Something else I can mention is the music for this level is normally the same as 2-3, but I changed it to 2-1 just to demonstrate changing the music for levels, which is actually extremely easy, thankfully. I'm not even sure if you can hear it. You probably can. Now here is the Tundra Anti-Air Vehicle, which as far as I know, this is the only level that actually has it. Surprisingly. So who knows, maybe they had originally tested this level using Anti-Air Veterans, and then they decided to put in the Anti-Air Vehicle. It could have been before they even made the Anti-Air Vehicle that they were trying it out with Veterans. Not totally sure. And since the Barrage Balloons haven't been destroyed, the electromagnetic gate is still up, so I can't go out and, like, fight the frontier units or anything. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the anti-air vehicle. Now... I guess the last thing, and the most interesting thing about this level, is, of course, the Barrage Balloon. Which is a unique air unit to Tundra. No other army has Barrage Balloons. They were in the first game, but they were called Spy Balloons, but it's pretty much the same thing. And I was kind of surprised that they were even a unit. Like, I was almost expecting them to be a structure that just kind of moves around and you wouldn't be able to play as it, but it's actually a unit. And obviously you can't shoot, but you can float around. It controls kind of like a very slow gunship or air transport. Like, this is as fast as you can fly. And you can kind of go down and up. Enemy units don't seem to go after you. Probably because you're not hostile at all. Oh, wait! I stand corrected. That flame veteran is trying to burn me. That's the first time I've seen that. But yeah, Barrage Balloon, 
kind of amazing that it's even playable. And just kind of funny, too. It was actually a little bit of work to get it playable, since uh, the other ones wouldn't let me control transfer to them because they're set up to not let you control transfer to them, so I had to add another one which didn't have those kind of limitations, so I was able to play as it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So Barrage Balloon, Anti-Air Vehicle, and Fighter. And I guess we'll move on to the next level now. Since I can't finish it as the defending army. Well, I could technically if I just waited for the time to run out. But I don't want to. So that's all for the Western Frontier campaign. We have one more level to go to. This time from Tundra. It is... Operation Nautilus. Hmm, I wonder what unit we could be showing here. I'll give you a hint. It's another stupid grunt. Grunt type. I should say. Yep, it's the munitions expert. And normally he doesn't even show up until the end of the mission when you complete all your objectives. But here we are, in a POW camp. I added a mortar veteran so we could get out of here. Because the mortar veteran can destroy the barbed wire. And then these mortar veterans are... These mortar veterans are kind of glitched out because we're not supposed to be here yet. So they still just kind of stand there. That said, here's the munitions expert. And he really is just the same as the Solar Empire munitions expert. Apart from his appearance, he's carrying, like, dynamite on his backpack. But he also doesn't have a gun, so you can't shoot. And I'm also not sure if you would be able to arm the bombs at the Exylvanian Dreadnoughts. Because I haven't actually tried that. But yeah, here he is. So. Munitions expert. And I'm not even going to try to finish this level because chances are the other POWs won't be able to be freed yet. And also it would be very hard to do with just one mortar veteran. So that is all of the Tundran units. I don't think I missed any. Although I will say one thing which might interest some people. It seems like there was originally going to be a Tundran uh, Strato Destroyer. Because in the XML for this main menu screen, it has all of the sprites, like all of the unit sprites that you see. For example, if you go to a mission, all of these. And there's one for a Tundran Strato Destroyer. But my guess is they decided not to finish it pretty early on because all it is is the Western Frontier Strato Destroyer colored red. Like, they literally just took the sprite for it and made it red. So it could have been used for early testing of a Tundran Strato Destroyer. But I'm not totally sure. But I just, I just thought I would mention that. So, that's all the Tundran units. Next time we'll be finally doing Exylvania, which is the one that everyone seems to care the most about, including me. So next time we'll do that, and see you then.